Lights, camera, action. When a script is written that is so bad, no one will film it. These brave podcasters will bring it to life just so they can mock it. This is Table Reads. So the movie is kaput, which means your script ain't worth the buffalo shit on a nickel. Table Reads with Sean McBee, Jeff Lewis, and Joshua Baker. Hello and welcome to Table Reads, episode 110. 110. Part 11 of Lord of the Rings by John Borman. Part 11. So many parts. The finale. For sure, 100%. Finale. But this is part, this is episode 110? Yes. That's a lot of episodes, Jeff. That was 111. No. no. This is part oh 11. Part 11. Oh. This 100 un- was part one of this script. This is Let's unprecedented, see. Jeff. Oh. What? Unprecedented. <laughs> yeah, unprecedented. <laughs> Sorry, we get into the high number. Double digits fuck me up every time. <laughs> it's like anything past the number of I fingers I have. If I can't, yeah, if I can't do it on the hands, it's no good. So today I was... uh. Uh, doing the videos for YouTube and it kept erroring out when I was trying to export it because it turns out that 109 or yeah 109 dash John Borman's Lord of the Rings part 10 was just too many characters for Premiere to handle (laughs) what the fuck (laughs) going into the double digits was like I, I don't know. What I'm doing. We ruined the algorithm. So I had to save it as just L O T R 10 and then change it later because Premiere was not having it. That's super weird. I did 9 and 10 today. No problems with 9. Huh. But exporting 10, no. Too long a title, buddy. Interesting. Too long. Interesting. I had a whole bunch of problems with Premiere this morning, too. So that's nothing new. Yeah. Adobe. <laughs> making our lives suck since always. <laughs> Adobe. I drove to work. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I listen to the podcast. Of I listen my, to the podcast. The podcast of myself. All right. <laughs> I like, definitely want to get through this today. So let's, right, let's jump in. Previously on Table Reads. <laughs> the Battle of the Pelennor Fields is finally won, and Aragorn takes his rightful place as the King of Gondor and immediately sets off for his next battle at the Black Gates of Mordor. Gandalf faces against Saruman, who is acting as the mouth of Sauron. As Sauron's power grows, Aragorn and his soldiers are beset by a horde of Mordor's forces. Meanwhile, Sam and Frodo have been reunited and are working on escaping the orc-filled tower, which is where we find them now. Fade in. And look who remembered to turn on the script this time. <gasps> it's and there. For it's those so- of you watching on YouTube, you can read along on the script. Except if you're not watching on YouTube, why not? Check it out on YouTube. We have 23 subscribers over there because our YouTube channel is pretty new. Like so and, subscribe. Like and subscribe. Hit the, smash that notification button. Yeah, hit that bell. Bing. Yeah. I, I'm going to come just, up with some good stuff. Just in case you find yourself in an orc-filled tower. <gasps> You missed that. I'm not saying what it was. I'm not <laughs> saying what it was, but you missed something great. It was very sexy. <laughs> it was incredible. Oh, yeah. Sean, That's how we do it. Sean McNipples. Wait, you ruined it. You ruined <laughs> it. My wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> <clears throat> Exterior tower. Day gloom. Sam and Frodo crawl and stumble through the door. The frenzied orcs gather weapons and rush towards it. Sam and Frodo find themselves on the ragged rocks outside the tower. Mount Doom looms above them, the gloom rising out of its cone. Nobody calls the top of a volcano a a cone, right? I guess a geologist might. Did a geologist? No, an architect wrote this. Oh, Mm, I I don't know. He was going after standard geometry, James. There you go. (laughs) Rhododendron, wrote a, what is it? Rhododendron? That's a flower, right? No, that's a rhododendron, but there is like a 
Oh, uh, Rodeca Rodecahedron. Yeah. Oh man, it's not a rhododendron. You'll meet all that. Up. And there's a <laughs> and there's a dodecahedron, which is 14 sided, like uh, the like Shakespeare's theater, the Globe Theater. Oh Some yeah. Doctor Seuss shit. <laughs> Doctor <Bro>. Seuss shit. <laughs> no. This is a bunch of made up words. <laughs> Actually, I learned that from Doctor Who. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I denied your credibility. <laughs> we are not in Alabama right now. Wrong doctor. Uh, a river of orcs gushes out of the door in the wake of Sam and Frodo. They hurtle down towards the gates of Mordor. A few orcs break away from the main contingent, fanning out across the land and slopes of Mount Doom. We're finally at Mount Doom. Sam and Frodo scamper down the ragged rocks, dodging the orc patrols. The hobbits crouch into the rocks for shelter. They have escaped the tower. Only the open mountain lies before them. Exterior, the gates of Mordor, day gloom. The battle is joined. The chosen make up a long line and take the full impact of the forces issuing from Mordor. Aragorn's power is awesome. <laughs> oh wait, yeah. Let me get let me give that to Aragorn. Sorry. Hold on. Ooh! Oh! He's playing this on that broke-ass sword. This, this is like the, uh... This is like Lord of the Rings Thunder Road. You've hidden this track from me, John, and it's, <laughs> it's making my eye twitch that we haven't used this. Before. It's called Hard Rock Superhero. I keep skipping it because God damn you. it doesn't fit with Middle Earth, Jeff. What? <laughs> what about any of the other ones? Aragorn. There is no electric guitar in Middle Earth. Aragorn's power is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Aragorn looks on a sick riff. <laughs> Aragorn's power is awesome. He holds one flank alone, rotating the sword reforged around his head, cutting swaths through the enemy. Blah! Gandalf is on the other flank, employing a mixture of conventional swordsmanship with his elf sword and wizard tricks. <laughs> Popping rabbit side of hats and shit. Surprise! <laughs> Stabs of lightning fly off his oscillating staff. Bring, oscillating? Bring back that his music, like, Sean! <laughs> he has a staff and a sword? Bring back the he music! He always has. Glamdring, the yep. sword, yep. and the staff. Do do? Oh. That's... That doesn't seem like established Lord of the Rings canon. That's it doesn't OP. make sense. How do you fight with that? He's casting lightning over here, like whizzing it around. He's like stabbing over. Here. <laughs> he's like lightning chop, lightning chop. Oh, he's no, no, no! He fucking tapes it together, and he's got like magic on one end, like a Darth Maul at bow staff. <laughs> <laughs> You're five, Jeff. Whatever. His power is awesome. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Jeff. Are you the Star Wars bow staff kid from that viral video a long oh! time ago? You figured it out. <laughs> it's me. I have not aged correctly. If, if only, if only you had all of the the money from the clicks. That's true. Kid that kid like, probably didn't. Kid get was like twenty when I was twelve. He probably. <laughs> if Reddit has taught me anything, yeah, it's yeah. that he got like twenty hits and then someone reposted it and yep. got twenty million. Yep. And he died from. Fucking pro, pro reposted. <laughs> <laughs> Gandalf is on the. Uh, no, I already did that. Uh, Do it again. Oscillating staffs everywhere. At his mysterious behest, some of the giant men turn their clubs against their orc masters. This is super metal. So I really like this. He's like, -na 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 -na, and those guys, wow, that dude's totally metal. Let's kill these it's guys. One of the most <laughs> pussy scripts up until now. <laughs> At the center are the others Legolas, Gimli, Merry, Pippin, Eomir, Eowyn, supported by the Chosen. Two bearers hold high the effigy of Frodo. What? Oh, that's right. The orcs had an effigy of Frodo. Oh. I. I thought like all the good guys were holding up yeah, a burning Frodo. <laughs> like, like boo! <laughs> they fight bravely, bravely and fiercely, but are pushed back by the overwhelming odds. They retreat in an orderly way, leaving many of their comrades killed and wounded. But they take a heavy toll of orcs. Exterior: slopes of Mount Doom, Day Gloom. Sam and Frodo clamber warily up the 
ever steeper slopes. Their hands and legs are lacerated by the jagged rocks. The ground is loose and shifting, and they keep losing their footholds and slipping down, forced to grab the sharp points of rock that grow like prickles on the back of the mountain. Frodo has thrown off most of the orc clothes. He is naked above the waist. Oh yeah. And the no. ring swings free. Yeah, it Ooh. does. Swinging free. <laughs> Commando ring. <laughs> Sam still carries the frying pan and other implements, but he stops and loosens his belt. Cook me something good, bitch. <laughs> he throws his pack to the ground. We shan't be doing much cooking. Might as well travel light. <laughs> he keeps his water bottle, however, and offers it to Frodo, who has a glazed, distracted look. Frodo drinks, having to turn it upside down to find water. Is this the last, Sam? Sam nods. Frodo hands it back. Sam rummages in his pocket. He pulls out a broken lembus. Here, master. Look what I found in my pocket. Eat! Frodo shakes his head, refusing it. He looks back. Below is the tower. Above it, Frodo sees the eye appear. It searches the land, seeking, probing, and turns its gaze towards him. He twists his head away, keeping his eyes down. I have no hunger, Sam. Nothing is left of me. No taste of food. No memory of tree or flower. No sound of wind. Uh, uh, real quick, wasn't Limbus bread? Yeah. So he's like, He's, he's like, oh, I wish I had some water. He's like, no more water? He's like, no. He's like, he's like want some bread? <laughs> <laughs> Just to further fuck yourself. <laughs> then if he took a bite, he'd be like, would you like to whistle something? <laughs> he's like, here, eat this and pretend it tastes like water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know Frodo would, would be like, Galadriel. 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 He's just licking it. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. <clears throat> My limbus. <laughs> Sam looks at him with deep concern, for Frodo is transformed. He has grown thin and gaunt, hardly a hobbit anymore. That's how I felt, Master, with the ring on. On or off makes little difference now. On or off. Frodo drifts into kind of a reverie. A thin smile crosses his face. I think I know how Gollum felt. Poor Gollum. We should go on now, Mr. Frodo. But Frodo scans the landscape, still shading his eyes from the side of the tower. Sam follows his gaze down to the gates of Mordor. They see the forces of Mordor flowing out of the gates like a river, brown and gray in color. The orcs move forward inexorably, and from all sides press against a much smaller force which stands out as a patch of vivid color. Far beyond, the fortress city of Minas Tirith is under siege. Flame and smoke curl up from the battlements. Too late. We come too late. Sam and Frodo gently by Sam takes Frodo gently by the shoulders and turns him away. He coaxes him up towards the summit. Keep going, Mr. Frodo. Keep trying. Exterior, gates of Mordor, day gloom. Gandalf and Aragorn fight to keep open a line of retreat, but sheer weight of numbers beats them. Two bearers keep the effigy of Frodo raised up and Gimli and Legolas defend it. A determined bunch of orcs attack them. Gimli's axe swings, cruel and crude. Legolas is a nimble and graceful swordsman. He wields a slender blade, but it works devastatingly. The dwarf and elf work beautifully as a team, Gimli doing the heavy work of destruction, Legolas dancing from side to side, quick to see and avert fresh dangers, protecting his friend. But they are but they too are forced to retreat. One of the bearers of the effigy is struck with a lance and Frodo's likeness topples forward. The orcs go wild, cutting and slashing at it. The head is half severed. A sword is driven through the heart. It crashes to the ground. So the, the good guys are holding an effigy of Frodo, or they were. Yeah, they're guarding it because maybe it's a voodoo doll of Frodo? I don't know. Does it work, though? The, nothing has said that this works. 
I, I don't know what it's for. I don't understand. Nothing is said the script works. <laughs> Got him. Only the dance scene works. The dance scene works perfectly. Exterior. Slopes of Mount Doom near the summit. Day gloom. Frodo collapses. He falls to the ground and slithers down the hill. <laughs> loose rocks tumbling over him. Sam goes back and crouches beside him. He's, I like to imagine it was face first. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I pictured and he's for like, sure. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like the Grinch. I can't walk. So yeah, he's just like squinching along. Like, blah, blah, blah. Nearly there, Master. A few more paces. Frodo, half conscious, tries to crawl up the steep slope, but slips back further than he climbs. Sam pulls him, but is deeply exhausted himself. Sam looks down the slope. Groups of orcs are climbing the mountainside. They search and probe as they go. The orcs, Master. They're looking for us. Frodo looks about him feverishly. He speaks quietly, coaxingly, again shading his eyes from the tower. I know you're there. Come on out, Gollum, old friend. Sam looks around nervously but can see nothing. But a sound is heard which might be Gollum hissing. Sam turns. Uh, Sam turns back to look at the sad sight of his master lying helpless in the loose rock. Let me bear it for you a little, a little way for you, Mr. Frodo. A wild thought comes into Frodo's eyes. Stand away! It's mine! The angry moment quickly passes and Frodo manages a smile of apology. You can't help me in that way again, Sam. If you try to take it, I should go mad. Well, if I can't carry it, I can carry you, Master. And with that, Sam collects Frodo's limp form into his arms and starts up the mountain again. Sam looks back towards the gates of Mordor. Look there, Master. They're not beaten yet, and nor are we. Sam sees that the Chosen are now completely surrounded and trapped inside the huge orc army. They are obviously doomed. However, they have formed a ring and this thin circle of bright color holds yet against the enemy. Exterior, below the gates of Mordor, day gloom. The Ring of the Chosen gradually shrinks. I love that they're close enough to Minas Tirith to see that they can see what's going on. That doesn't make any sense. None at like, all. None at all? Okay. That's a very p poorly way to build your your castle. Like, Well, why? You can look, look at the bad guys at all times. Like, like, they well, wouldn't they let them do that. Like, why? Uh, Except Mount it's a Doom. bad guy mountain, Mount and Doom. you don't want bad guys to have the high ground. Yeah, and it's like the center of his fucking power, too. Like, it's not like a place to go near. Oh. Also, it means that, like... It's safe travel, safe travel, safe travel, safe travel, safe travel, all the way to Minas Tirith, and then it's like a 20-minute walk to Mount Doom. <laughs> hey, please keep an eye on me while I walk over here. Yeah, what if Mount Doom was to erupt? <laughs> like, well, okay, so, so, I'm okay. I, I thought that the after we won the fight at the castle, all of our guys came here to fuck up Mordor. Is that not? They're they're still at the castle. Yeah. Oh my God! Right? Well, I mean, they're—they're they're, actually they're not at Minas Tirith. They are at the Black Gate. That's oh, right. They're, they're okay. okay. They're right, at the Black right, Gate, right. but it should still be further Pretty in. Separated. Okay. Okay. You yeah. know, you—you you shouldn't be able to see the Black Gate and all the people at it clearly from Mount Doom. There needs to be some travel there. Sure. Otherwise, you're still 20 minutes into Mordor. Right, <laughs> right. I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm, I'm the one re like listening to it wrong. I'm, 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 my mind's fixing it. That's the problem. I'm fixing it. Don't do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> that is antithetical to this show. That's true. Chip, chip, chip. Exterior, below the gates of Mordor, day gloom. The ring of the chosen gradually shrinks. They fight on as wave upon wave of orcs confront them. Gandalf and Aragorn are side by side now. Defeat shows in their eyes. Eowyn fights next to Aragorn. Against all reason, my bones believe that Frodo somehow would. He is cut off by the need to fight a fresh assault and soon swept out of Aragorn's earshot. He needs to use some of those magnetism powers. 
Lightning sword. Because he's also Magneto. So. Right. What? That's true. Or some of his new cat powers. Please, no. Stop it. <laughs> Catwoman's dead. <laughs> Mary and Pippin are fighting side by side, flanked by Gimli and Legolas. I, I think we're losing. I suppose that means poor Frodo and Sam have perished. I don't think adventures are nearly as good as people make out. <laughs> I'd like to have seen the Shire again, just once. The fighting sweeps them apart, and they can just yell out to each other from time to time. Lie on the riverbank! Smoke a pipe! Fresh bread! Fried mushrooms! Feather bed! And they disappear in the fierce melee. Best part of that the whole. That was cool. The like they were like, the uh, <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Yeah, that was cool. Exterior, the summit and crater of Mount Doom. De Gloom. Frodo is on his feet, but Sam is still half carrying him. The way is gray and ashen. Sulfurous vapors rise from the pitted rock over which they travel. Ahead, up a steep incline, is the crater of the volcano. A heat haze rises from the cone and becomes the gloom. They move painfully slowly. Behind them, the slopes are crawling with orcs, but they are still some way off. Frodo slumps to the ground again as though dragged down by the weight of the ring. He begins to crawl. The long chain about his neck reaches to the ground. The ring is dragged across the rock. A strange thing happens. The rocks seem to tremble. They watch the ring with fear and fascination. It rumbles as it drags across the rocks. Sam looks up. Nearly there, master. Frodo follows his eye. The crater is just ahead. They can hear the roar of the deep fires. Sam looks back. The orc patrols are closer. He turns to Frodo and clasps his arm. What do you have to do, Mr. Frodo? Just throw it into the fire that made it. That's all. Unaccountably, Frodo begins to sob. They are both crawling now, at the very end of their tether. Sam is struck by a sudden blow which throws him down. He looks up and Gollum is upon him. Sam gets in a kick and pushes him over. They struggle. Wicked masters! Mustn't hurt precious! <coughs> Frodo watches the struggle. Gollum has become as thin as they are from the, his endless suffering quest. I was expecting you, Gollum. I thought you'd be in at the end. Gollum breaks free of Sam, despite the fact that we saw him drown. <laughs> and hobbles over to Frodo. He clutches weakly at Frodo, but Frodo is weaker still and cannot evade him. Gollum pulls Frodo to the ground and grabs for the ring. Give it to us! It's ours! Fifth! Please, master! The threat to the ring brings a sudden charge of power into Frodo. He protects it with one hand and pushes Gollum away with the other. Don't touch it, you... You... Gollum! I am Frodo, Lord of the Ring! Oh, he said it! Back it up! <laughs> Is that full of milk? That's a wrap. No. Oh. That's the milk horn. The milk horn. That's the Gollum milk horn. I wish. Gollum backs away, terror in his eyes, but behind the terror burns the eternal longing, the insatiable lust for the ring. Frodo starts to move forward again. Gollum clutches at his legs, holding him back. Please, master! If precious goes, we will die too! Sam, mustering his strength, staggers over to Frodo and Gollum. He tries to break Gollum's grip on Frodo's legs. He strains with all his might. Gollum hangs on, whimpering. At last, his grip breaks. Go on, master. I'll hold him here. Frodo drags himself on, towards the precipitous edge of the crater. Gollum struggles with Sam, but they are both so exhausted that their movements are slow, languorous almost. As the ring gets closer to the brink of the rumblings of the earth, as the ring gets closer to the brink, should be a comma, the rumblings of the earth increase. Sam hangs on desperately. 
They are bathed in the red glow of the fires. Quick, master! Do it! I can't hold him much longer! A deeper tremor shakes them all. The eye appears, turning from the battle. It grows larger and fixes on the crater. Frodo cries out in agony, but he inches on towards the edge. Another tremor, stronger still. Frodo gets to his feet. He stands on the edge. He slowly takes the chain from his neck. He holds it quite still for a moment. The flames leap up as though to greet the ring and Frodo is silhouetted against them. The ring hangs from his hand, the tiny band spinning on the end of the slender chain. Frodo turns to Sam. I have come, but I do not choose to do what I came to do. The ring is mine. He sets the ring upon his finger and disappears. Sam cries out and is hurled back by the impact of a great rending of the earth. The eye grows to a blinding intensity. Exterior, below the gates of Mordor, day gloom. As the earth shakes and the Mount and Mount Doom rumbles, the forces of Mordor cease fighting. They turn to look up at the mountain. Gandalf, Aragorn, and the Chosen, fighting a bitter last stand, are stunned by the sudden pause. They too look up at the mountain. Hope lights on Gandalf's face. Exterior, Mordor and the gates. Day, gloom. The orcs on the battlefield and those patrolling Mordor suddenly burst into action. They race frantically up the mountainside, screaming and moaning. They run on towards the crater. Many throw away their weapons to gain speed. Some of the men of Minas Tirith, grasped by an insatiable urge, rush off, racing the orcs. Exterior, crater, Mount Doom, day gloom. Gollum finds a last ounce of energy and tears free from Sam's tired hands. He runs up the slope to the edge of the crater. He gropes his way, th he gropes this way and that, then seizes the invisible Frodo. How exactly? Maybe he can see him? Because Maybe he's he can like feel him. In the ring? Yeah, that's right. He can feel the ring. I mean, he's been following Not him. Not him, so he feels yeah, the ring. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We're trying to fix it here in the last four pages. I mean, the, damn, the damn ring makes the rocks tremble. So, I mean, how hard could it be? That's true. True. Sam crawls desperately over the erupting ground to try and help. Gollum fights his unseen foe with a mad fury on the edge of the abyss. To and fro he sways, sometimes teetering on the brink, then drawing back. Gollum draws up his clasped hands to his mouth. His fangs gleam as he bites at something. Frodo gives a cry and reappears, falling to his knees at the chasm's end. Gollum, dancing crazily, holds aloft the ring, a finger still thrust within its circle. Precious! My precious! Oh, my precious! Gollum looks up adoringly at the ring. He steps back too far and finds himself teetering on the brink. He wavers for a moment, and then, with a shriek, plunges into the abyss. Out of the depths comes his diminishing cry, PRECIOUS! PRECIOUS! That's way better than a fade. I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate the, the, the practical fade. That's dope. Gollum plunges into the... Wait, molten lava. It. Into the molten lava. Yeah. There is a great roar. Flames leap up out of the inside of the crater. High into the sky. They burn into the great hall of gloom. Sam stumbles forward and drags Frodo away from the edge. Blood trickles from his bitten off finger. Frodo is suddenly calm and aloof. He holds up the finger which isn't. <laughs> Sam drags him away. Table Reads will return after this brief word from our sponsors. 
What's up, docs and docettes? Trevor Thompson, the self-appointed Looney Tunes critic here, and if you like old cartoons and watching online reviewers dissect them, then you probably said the same thing I did about two years ago. Hey, what the fuck? Here, watch your language, you bud. Every Saturday morning, I do a brand new commentary of a Warner Brothers short. All throughout the month, I do video essays examining the history of these cartoons. Catch my videos on youtube.com slash Ferris Wheelhouse 2, or just use the hashtag Looney Tunes Critic. And now, here's Eric Bauza, the new voice of Bugs Bunny. <laughs> You've been listening to the Looney Tunes critic. Ain't he a stinker? Lights, camera, action. So the movie's kaput, which means your script ain't worth the buffalo shit on a nickel. Now, back to table reads. Man, so I kind of had forgotten that Gollum was supposed to be in the end scene because we saw him drown. Like, I didn't forget he was supposed to be there. But I kind of thought they weren't going to bring him back. Oh, okay. Because he, like, in the book, I think he, like, falls off the side of the mountain and into the mist, and you don't really see what happens to him. That leaves a lot more room for him to turn up than, like, watching him drown. He, and they drowned again in like, lava. What the, <laughs> <laughs> Does it count as drowning? Double drown. I don't know it. Like, I feel like you could die from that without anything going in your lungs. <laughs> I'll tell Anakin. Yeah. I have the high ground, my <laughs> darling Padawan. Which reminds me, way off topic, but it reminds me of my favorite meme, which is uh, that whole scene with them, like, just mm -hmm. as panels. And then he's laying there all on fire and shit. And he's like, tell my son I want him to have my lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, Gollum came back, now Gollum's dead, the ring's destroyed, like, we're, we're fucking there, guys. Wrap it just, up, man. Just kiss for his If this is the art. Peter Jackson, uh, movie, we only have 60 pages left. Hey, let's do it! <laughs> let's form a dwarf ball and roll down the hill. There was Again? so much left of movie after this. I remember watching it in the theater, and like just half the theater got up and left. They're like, "Rings done, so am I." Fade in. Rings done, so am I. <laughs> <clears throat> Eat, pray, love. <laughs> Exterior: Mount Doom and Mordor. Day: The lands of Mordor quake and rend apart. I I feel like we need something more dramatic. Drama. The lands of Mordor quake and rend apart. The great tower of Sauron crumbles at its foundation and falls in ruins. The fire from the volcano reaches high into the gloom. The flames spread wildly across the sky. The script comes on the screen for those YouTube viewers. I was so good at it earlier. Hit <laughs> the one time. <laughs> The gloom burns out and disappears. The sun shines through. It is a beautiful summer's afternoon. This is what I wanted. The it is fire a, from the volcano it is reaches a high. A beautiful summer afternoon. They pull out a baseball and a baseball bat and decide to play a short, a small game out in the Pelennor the, Fields. And then the flames spread wildly across the sky. Pel Pelennor <laughs> Fields is now the name of a stadium. Hey! <laughs> the orcs versus the the riders of it's Gondor. The only thing separating them from Mount Doom. Oh, how great would it be if it did like jump forward to like 20th century? Like, what's going on? Oh man, In Maximus is there. Area. Maximus is there. <laughs> yes, Maximus, and he's digging the ring out. <laughs> My wife. What do you want from me? <laughs> <laughs> what does you want from me? <laughs> uh, it is a beautiful summer's afternoon. The earthquake subsides. All is calm. On both sides, weapons are thrown down. Mm. All thought of war is gone. All heart for fighting lost. The orcs, rather like snakes, shed their scaled sin sk skins of armor. Pardon me. Scaled skins of armor. It's just hard to say. Revealing themselves to have disgusting white <laughs> slug-like skin, but rather human. No. Ew. No. <laughs> what? Gross. 
It's like a bad episode of the Kardashians. They're just pasty. They don't. They don't like. They look like Trump without his orange face paint on. <laughs> they're like. They're like stop all war, right? And then they're just throwing down their arms and stuff. Like, yeah, it's like, it's we can live in peace. And then they take their shit off and everybody's like, <laughs> <laughs> they're like, they're like gross, Fuck. naked, grub people. Like, gross. Sun's out. On. Time to turn. Uh, yeah. Put it back on. Let's fucking fight. <laughs> <laughs> Please just murder me starting with my eyes. The orcs, rather like snakes, oh yeah, blah blah blah, but rather human, the risen dead stretch with relief in the sun and fade from sight. <gasps> Ghost army. Frodo and so Sam. Important. Oh, no giant eagle to rescue them. Frodo and Sam come stumbling, falling, loping down the mountainside toward the men and orcs below. We were right there. Just, <laughs> just there. They're still hungry. <laughs> Cheers and shouts and tears of joy mingle with a great fanfare of triumphant music. From where? I don't know that that's the right music. What? <laughs> it's the music from the Star Wars. Ceremony. I think you've got. I think you've got a, the different RR. No, same one. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Sam holds up Frodo's four-fingered hand, acknowledging the cheers. <laughs> Wait, everybody's happy. He's like, look, it's gone. <laughs> it's fucked up. <laughs> the path opens up in the ragged ranks of men and orcs through which comes Aragorn, crowned and glorious. In his train are the Chosen, with Merry and Pippin carrying the effigy of Frodo. Missing its head. Oh, yeah. They still have it. Men and orcs pick up abandoned swords and beat them on discarded shields. The wild cheers transform into a rhythmic hasana, with chants and counterchants. Hail, Hail Frodo, Frodo, Lord, Lord of, of the, the rings. rings! Hail Frodo, Lord of the Nine Fingers! See, that's what I was referencing several episodes back when I made the Nun Fingers joke and y'all didn't know what the fuck I was talking about. Frankie fucking Four Fingers. <laughs> <laughs> What's her face is looking at his hand like, oh, that was my favorite finger. Also, I don't know that he is ever <laughs> referred to in the books as the Lord of the Ring. I feel like that's like yeah, that's Borman like, being like he's just like people aren't gonna get it. Yeah, you can't do a whole movie when there's no actual Lord of the Ring in it. This is like the kind of like thinking that goes in from people that are like, why is it called Back to the Future? He's in the past. That doesn't make any sense. Right, right. Like motherfucker. He's in the past. Where is he trying to get back to? Complicated. His mom's vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. In one. Uh, they stagger down until suddenly Frodo finds he has fallen into Gandalf's arms. Wait. Gandalf is beaming and crying at the same time. Where the hell are you at? Yeah, I think we skipped some. You skipped. We were right Oh, under I did. Hell. I skipped a bunch. I'm so yeah, sorry. Yeah, I was like, whoa. As Aragorn comes through the crowd toward Frodo, he is acknowledged too. Hail Aragorn, King, King of, of the Men, men and orcs, orcs repented. Oh, so these orcs have now repented. I don't think and so. And accepted Aragorn as their king suddenly? They call as their, themselves as their, the as their Jesus. They just admit that they were the bad guys all <laughs> Yeah, I, just, I don't feel like they were like just being like murdering people and then they're like, oh, all their, all their armor fell off. And no, 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 slugs. this is like, no, no, there's a historical precedent precedence for this. You remember when when we rolled into Berlin, all the Nazis were like throwing off their armbands. And going, hey, Mickey Mouse, yeah, <laughs> hamburgers. <laughs> they're just like, they're just like watching a bunch of people starve to death. He's like, do you think we as a bad guy? <laughs> 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 I was just things are thinking. And that's like, Maybe. FDR, <laughs> we repent for being so bad guys. A <laughs> big oops. <laughs> so sorry. I mean, as long as Hitler got rid of his ring, right? I mean. Hitler's ring has been melted in Volcano. We're all good guys now. The right <laughs> ring. This is the only reason we were following him. <laughs> he is fashion forward. 
<laughs> Merry and Pippin. Yo, no, I didn't read that wrong. Merry and Pippin breaks away from the others and run ahead to greet Sam and Frodo. The hobbits hug each other and shed their tears. Frodo is slightly detached, but allows them to hoist him onto their shoulders. This is the signal for a fresh wave of cheers. Yay! They start down toward Aragorn and the others. The weight of Frodo increases their pace, and finally they are running, almost in a free fall. Hail Frodo, Lord of the Ring! They stagger down until suddenly Frodo finds he has fallen into Gandalf's arms. Gandalf is beaming and crying at the same time. You did it! You... you... you hobbit! Frodo forces a smile, still not able to respond fully. I thought you were dead, but then I thought I was dead. Many times. Gandalf, holding Frodo aloft, starts down the slope, the others following. Aragorn takes Frodo and embraces him, then lifts him onto his shoulders. As they go down towards the Gate of Mordor, Frodo is passed from hand to hand. Gimli, Legolas, Eowyn, Eomir all take their turn. He hasn't even met some of these people. They're all <laughs> grabbing his nuts. Like. Ah. <laughs> it's like, Gimli, sure, Legolas, sure, Eowyn, who the fuck are you? Eomir, who's this guy? The orc trumpeters and the horn blowers of Rohan join in the triumphant circus-like music, and the exultant men and orcs follow on, cavorting wildly. <laughs> Frodo walks hand in hand with Aragorn, who is radiant with light and majesty. Merry and Pippin again bear the effigy of Frodo. You got a real thing there. You don't need that now. <laughs> That's who they're chanting at. <laughs> <laughs> Because they don't, they haven't met him either. <laughs> oh, the stick man. As they walk, they pull out the blades and arrows that have pierced it. Frodo glances at it over his shoulder, reminded of his own hurts. Merry and Pippin take Frodo's clothes from the effigy and pass them to Sam, who gives them a hasty dusting before helping Frodo into them. Frodo walks on, allowing Sam to dress him. That's a really weird scene. Yeah, it's, I mean, think... How He's the fuck, walking the does, whole time. He's like, so imagine someone trying to put some pants on you while you're walking. <laughs> and the guy's just fucking hungry. He needs a doctor. <laughs> They're like, yeah, party. It would be a really cool scene if they actually could do that. Like so, if Sam was so good, he also, like slides his pants on while he's walking slowly. <laughs> like, so Frodo's just hanging brain. Right. <laughs> <laughs> bleeding off of his hand it's, like i was a spider <laughs> there is so much <laughs> hobbit nudity in this yeah, script yeah, yeah, yeah. the naked effigy is now the, the effigy's is, naked it's the effigy though it's just a strong now the effigy's hanging brain though the you e know the effigy is very detailed correct <laughs> yeah it's got a little a little hobbit little wiener dick. <laughs> hobbit dick the naked <laughs> effigy is now passed over the heads of the crowd a sea of hands stretch to touch it, <laughs> to tear a fragment from it. It passes rapidly across the crowd, disintegrating until nothing is left of it. Accompanying this, a chant begins. Give me, Frodo give me bits of effigy on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> I got the dick! <laughs> Frodo, Frodo lives! Frodo, Frodo lives. lives! His effigy is dead! <laughs> I got a stick! Exterior, the gates of Mordor. Day. They walk through the gates of Mordor. The cheers and triumphant music continues. Gimli looks disparagingly at the terrible, grimacing jaws of stone of which the gates are made. With a master stroke, he strikes one corner of the mouth, transforming half of the face into a smile. <laughs> now awesome. the gates are like the Greek mask of comet tragedy. Many stop to admire and discuss Gimli's work but he slings his axe across his shoulder and walks off, leaving them to it. The crowd argues about the enigmatic stone face, forgetting Frodo. What the fuck was that scene, y'all? Wow, people are very <laughs> easy to move on to the next thing, apparently. Minas Tirith just has art critics. <laughs> well, I like, don't know about that piece. Huh? It's like, this yeah, dude yeah, yeah. literally yeah. just saved the world like 20 minutes ago, but, oh look, someone has defaced this stone face right door mm. 
What what were we talking about before? I don't even recall. What He's at the end. He's running out of gas. Yeah, that's yeah. Borman's like fucking I gotta wrap everything up. Yeah. Exterior. Outside of the gates of Minas Tirith. Day. Oh, by the way, I'd like to point out that gloom is gone. It's just day. Yeah, no, no day more gloom. day gloom. It yeah, burned yeah, away. Gloom. It burned away. The volcano burned. That's away. right. Burnt the gloom. That's what volcanoes do. This is not good music. We're, we're ending everything. We can be happy now. Frodo, Sam, and Gandalf walk on through the crowd with Gimli and Legolas following on. There we go. So I, lo I lost where you were. And <laughs> so there's this part coming up that says legless veterans. <laughs> I thought they misspelled Legolas. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh no. <laughs> what a terrible misspelling. Frodo, Sam, and Gandalf walk on through the crowd with Gimli and Legolas following on. <laughs> Celebrations continue. The various military bands are now stationary, but still playing, and around them groups of men and women dance and sing. Stalls have been set up and people are trading. Legolas veterans beg by the wayside. Oh. By the way. <laughs> Legolas veterans. <laughs> Aragorn sits on an improvised throne on a raised platform. Eowyn is at her side. They are surrounded and pressed upon by citizens with petitions and complaints. Already? Jesus. Wow. Their art sucks. It's like they brought all the complaints they've had about the realm with them just in case a king turned up today. <laughs> the dwarf well, if we win, I certainly want to get my chestnut tree back in order. The dwarf to face our gates. <laughs> Scrolls are thrust forward as people clamor for a hearing. Aragorn reads a parchment, using a glass as he seems a little long-sighted. Pippin, the jester, and Merry, acting as page in waiting to Eowyn, yawn with boredom. <sighs> Frodo, Sam, and Gandalf pass this scene trying to catch the eye of their former comrades, but Aragorn is much too involved. However, Merry and Pippin see them and wave shrugging their shoulders to indicate that they are helplessly caught inside the crowd of litigators. I don't know that this denouement needs, like, the boring day-to-day -day of running a kingdom scene. Very, and very quickly. What, what, I, <clears throat> why are we showing this? How long is this supposed like, to be after I, Yeah, I don't thing? know. Like, maybe, it seems like, like they're just walking over here from the battle. Yeah. Right, right. But maybe some time has passed that they have not bothered to tell us about. Well, he said an improvised throne. Like, they're still in the fucking yeah. field. Like, Yeah, it's an improvised throne. So this is just now. This is just now. It's like, like grab those bodies. You can sit on those bodies. That's so your he's, throne. So he's, like, reading petitions from people while wiping blood off his face with a rag, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to re read back through. It says nothing about any time jump or anything. They all, they all just got jobs and started immediately. Yeah, conversely, it was like nine years after we won the Revolutionary War that we had a constitution. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're all hugging. I love that they're all hugging fucking Frodo. And he's like, yeah, it's like, Pippin's like, no, I'm the jester. Like, <laughs> and Mary's like, no, I'm fucking man in waiting. <laughs> like, they just gave him jobs. They're like, kingdom's got to go. Bizarre. So bizarre. Frodo, Sam, and Gandalf, with Gimli and Legolas behind, cross the Pelennor fields, the crowd thinning as they move on unnoticed. The battlefield is scattered with the debris of war. They're still there. Yeah, yeah Jesus. But already a horse and plow is at work. What the fuck? Wow. <laughs> Making fur. Who brought their plow with them to the battle? Man. The same lady, the same wife who brought a baby to the battle. The beekeeper brigade. <laughs> <laughs> suckling, suckling. Yeah. Well, that's what I would like to have seen. If they didn't have the giant eagles to come get Sam and Frodo, bees. I would have liked to see the bees, bees! carry them back. <laughs> they just Not the bees! The hundred of them just picking them up by his clothes and shit. That's my favorite gif of all time. The o Oprah one. Have you seen it? Oh, yeah, yeah. When she's, like, unveiling the free car. She's like, bees! <laughs> and everybody's freaking out. Best gif ever made. It's really good. 
Thank you, Nick Cage, for bees. I knew what you were referring to, right. but it made me think of Oprah going, bees! Oh, wait, keep going. This, this paragraph gets sadder. Oh, excellent. Making furrows in the scorched and barren soil. A flock of crows follows the blade, cawing and swooping. It is shadow facts that pulls the ah! What the fuck is... <laughs> King of horses! Now King. I'm a farmer. <laughs> what the fuck Galadriel, is... Galadriel shows up, and she's got shadow a... Shadow facts, the mighty plow horse! She has a baby bump, and she's like, you better do your fucking part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you ain't gonna get away. Think you're just missing one, one finger? You got other fingers. <laughs> That nah, mode account bill zone. You can as, watch. <laughs> as they trudge on, they pass a desultory group of men and orcs gathered around an old man in a cloak. He is squatting on the ground, playing the sleight of hand game of the cups and the pea. He has three helmets instead of cups, and he uses a marble. Or is it an eyeball? The man glances up with an apologetic smile. It is Saruman. <laughs> Gandalf shakes his head. <laughs> Despairing of Saruman. Incredible. This is awesome. Incredible. Oh, I love it. Christopher Lee would have shit in his trailer and walked <laughs> off set. He would not have done this. This is so. incredible. Exterior, Middle Earth, various, <laughs> I, day. I really hope we get Mick Jagger again. Now, you know what happens to Sauron in the books? Mm -hmm. Or uh, Saruman, Saruman in the books. He goes back and takes over the Shire. Like, he brings men, and they occupy the Shire. He uses an alias called Sharky. And it's like my favorite part. These hobbits, now battle-hardened, ride into the Shire, underestimated by all these soldiers that are there, uh, who have easily conquered all these hobbits. They don't know what the fuck they're in for. And these four fucking hobbits, all by themselves, take back the Shire and cast out Saruman and Wormtongue. What the fuck? Hobbit, it's Hobbit fucking strike great. team. I feel like that would be a really fun D and D campaign to play as all hobbits and do shit like that. Hobbit strike team, yeah, B brigade, <laughs> the lowercase A team. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Exterior, Middle Earth, various, various places of the whole planet. Day, the little party walks on. They pass the withered tree under which Boromir was buried. The tree has burst into red blossom. This wall right by. They look at it distractedly and pass on. Well, our friend's under there. Peace. Legolas and Gimli follow, pausing for a moment to shed a tear over the grave. Oh, 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 oh. But going. when they look up at the blossom, they smile happily. <laughs> they have come to the road that leads down to the Shire. I can't, dear Sam. I have been pierced. Wait, I have been pierced by blade, sting, and tooth. I can't. Sam covers his ears. He will not listen. He turns to hide his face, distraught. Gandalf ruffles Sam's hair affectionately. Sam walks away, down the road by the waterfall, toward the valley of the beloved Shire. From below, a crowd of hobbits with banners of welcome come up to meet him. Sam's buxom girlfriend... Runs ahead and embraces him. Oh, yeah. I've always thought this track sounded like Shire music. Shire music. This absolutely yeah, is made Perfect for Shire music. They have this in pints? <laughs> Frodo averts his face sadly from this scene. He walks slowly on, humming, The road goes ever on. Gandalf fumbles in the pockets of his soiled white cloak, and you mean a gray cloak? and produces a crumpled firework. He lights it and throws it in the air above the hobbits. It splutters and fails to light. Gandalf shrugs ruefully and walks on. <laughs> what is the point of that whole goes, bit? He goes, and it doesn't work. He's like, eh, fuck it goes, <laughs> ooh, fucking lightning. <laughs> they are strung out now. Yeah. First Frodo, then Gandalf, then Gimli and Legolas. Exterior, sand dunes, day. Whoop. Standing in the dunes is the slender figure of Arwen, her dress and hair undulating in the breeze. She sees Frodo and beckons him on. She turns and is hidden again by the dunes. 
Exterior, beach and sea, day. The sound of waves and the call of gulls. Oh, shit. Mm. Uh, the sound of sea and the call of gulls. Ah, what, do, what do gulls make? Ah. Oh. Honk! Ah. <laughs> Motherfucker with his call. <laughs> that, that was it, it's more shit. of an ad. Oh no, uh, mine, 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 mine. Uh, but they do go like, ah, 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 ah. Uh, yeah. I grew up hearing them every day and they're terrible. Um, I hate seagulls and I hate palm trees also. FYI, fuck palm trees and seagulls. <laughs> I hate them for real. Let's cut Florida off with a sawzall. <laughs> Frodo and Gandalf cross the wet, shimmering sand. A small sailing boat lies at anchor. They head towards it. Behind them, Gimli and Legolas appear from the sand dunes. They stop to take in the sight of the sea. The sea! At last I behold it! Wailing voices spoke of it in dreams. It was the gulls. <laughs> Gimli picks up a shell, inspects it, puts it to his ear. Of stone, yet alive. Listen, Legolas. It will remind you of the elves. Legolas listens to the shell. They look up. Frodo and Gandalf had w have waded into the sea and are being helped aboard the little vessel. Legolas shades his eyes. He can see several figures in the craft. Galadriel, Elrond, Bilbo, and Arwen. The boat is cluttered with ancient tomes, mysterious alchemical objects, beautiful cloth, and dried fish. They greet the newcomers with smiles and gentle embraces. Their lips move, but Legolas cannot hear what they say. Get out of the boat! And so the last of the fair people depart forever. They look at each other disconsolately. Gimli indicates their surroundings. The beach. Let us stay here. Tis neither cave nor forest. Legolas nods contented agreement. Oh, they're just living together now. <laughs> Pretty forward for 1970. Right. It is not quite leaving, nor is it yet remaining. For a beach is between, like the twilight. <laughs> Everything he says is garbage, and I hate it. Yeah. Wait, wait, that's good. Men may need others than men. Mm. Or they just need men. Just men. <laughs> dig, 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 dig. <laughs> <laughs> Gimli looks out to sea. The little craft moves away. He squints, but cannot make out Frodo or Gandalf. He cups his hands to his ear. Immediately, he hears Gandalf's voice. Across the ocean, I shall talk less and laugh more. But it is a hobbit's laugh that comes tinkling over the sound of the waves, and it belongs unmistakably to Frodo. He laughs happily and the others join him. A rainbow arcs up from the water be oh, fuck you, beyond the little craft. Look! Only seven colors. Indeed, the world is failing. The tiny vessel sails on, a smudge on the glistening sea. The End <laughs> Fuck. So I, Legolas got the last word. Huh? I can't believe fucking shitty Legolas with his shitty dialogue got the shitty fucking last line. He got to <laughs> wrap up this entire epic fucking thing. What the fuck is up with that? That ended badly. Yeah, what? what? It also started badly, and there was a lot of bad in the middle. I mean, there were some scenes that weren't bad. I think the middle, the middle was good. The beginning was trash. The middle was like absolutely where this movie shined, like with all of its fucking experimental bullshit. Yeah. The end was just really good at being what it was, and well, the last bit, and then the ending. I just, I, like you said, I feel like he wrote this all. Like it was like we're not gonna sleep. What I don't until we <laughs> what I don't get is if Gandalf can shoot fucking lightning bolts and he's like such a badass with a sword, why did he freeze it if everybody into ice cubes? Remember when the wolves attacked? Like, couldn't they just fucking fought the wolves? Could he do it yet? 
Did he oh, do it no, as I think gray? he was. He had to be white. Tired from. Smoking too much fucking secret mushrooms. Or no, something. that was before Minister here. I don't know, man. I don't know. It. I. I forget. I got nothing. I got nothing. All right, guys. I'm gonna turn you into ice cubes. That's a good idea, cause I'm a wizard. It's fireworks. Fuck like, it. <laughs> buried ice cubes, no less. <laughs> right. He fought Satan. That's my my least favorite and favorite part. <laughs> fucking Saruman turned into like a shyster. <laughs> like, yeah, he's just a sideshow guy. He's like, and, he, and he looks up and he's like, oh well. Like, he's like, where's the ball? Where's yeah, the ball? Yeah. Where's uh, the ball? Find the ball. Twenty dollars. Where's that, the ball? That's how that's how he started. That's how he won the tower. That's, yeah, he was like the mouthpiece of like the devil. Yeah. Then he's over there like. Yeah, which one's it? Why did there? anybody chop his fucking head off? Like for real? Like, you can't trust that no. dude. Unbelievable. Just maybe John Borman thought like, oh, it's better to have him be like, uh, you know, humiliated. You know how we humiliate people instead of punishing them for their crimes because it's so much better. Just started that <laughs> after the ring was done. There was wanton murder in the Pelennor fields. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The fields are still they're red. They're covered in fucking corpses. The orcs but shouldn't let Sauron. The mud around. is right. red. Right. Right? Like, the humans are, could be like that, right? The humans could be like, oh, you know what? Live and let live. We're, we're seduced by the power. Also, of the orcs aren't supposed to be able to survive in daylight, and they're just like, time for a tan. Yeah. Poof. We're disgusting slug monsters. Right. All of that was bad. I'm really confused by that, yeah. Yeah. However, it's over. In, the end. In 11 episodes, one for each member of the Fellowship, right? It is good time. Yeah. And right at an hour, pretty much. Bam. Like, fucking perfect this was. God, we're getting good at this shit. So, Josh. You can see me. Uh... I'm going to have you change it for next time because I fixed my website. <gasps> so you can go to joshuajbaker.com. That's the part of my email right there where you can see my videos and stuff. You can also see my videos on vimeo.com slash mrjoshuajbaker, but it's more official now. Excellent. Jeff still has nothing. He's a, a ghost on the internet. I do not exist. He's a ghost in the machine. I come from the yucks, or come for the yucks, and then I sleep back in normal society. He feeds on the yucks. That's it. Although he could feed on your uh, Patreon support if you want to go to Patreon and support the channel. I love Patreon oh, yeah. dollars. Yeah, everybody go to Patreon. Um, actually, if you want to find us anywhere on the internet, go to Linktree slash Table Reads. Remember, that's uh, L-I-N-K... TR dot e -E slash table reads if you're not familiar with Linktree. Everything is there. Our YouTube channel, our website, every platform you could possibly listen to our show on, um, the Patreon, it's all there. Um, if you think we're on a website and you want to find us there, just put slash table reads and you'll pretty much find us. <laughs> That's a great idea. How come we don't have t-shirts? I want a t-shirt. Tablereads.gov. .gov, yes. Um, <laughs> the website is tablereadspodcast.com. Um, you can go to rate this podcast slash table reads, and it will give you links to review us <gasps> on whatever devices you happen to use or be on. Oh, that's very convenient. Yes, it's a new thing. Just invented like last week. Really? And we're on it because we're cutting edge motherfucking podcasting. We're there. So convenient. <laughs> Just shake that tree. Just so shake anyway, that link tree. Wherever you are listening to this, please rate and review. Uh, give a like, subscribe, all that shit. Uh, next week, Batman Year One by Frank Miller. Yes. Uno on The movie that would have been directed by Darren Aronofsky. So do tune in for that. That's going to be... A wild fucking ride. Like, Mr. Toad's gonna be like, that ride is too wild for me. However, Mr. Toad talks. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't think I ever got to ride Mr. Toad's wild ride. Oh, man. You're talking about Toad from Mario? I'm real old. Whoa! <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. On I that note, guys, <laughs> guys, we'll see you next week for Batman Year One. Until then, keep your unit on you. We'll miss you. 
This podcast was created by Sean McBee. For more, visit TableReadsPodcast.com. Cut to black. Black.